Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for our February webinar. Uh, this is the February installment of the Navigating Loss webinar series, and this presentation is about navigating world changes and finding your way to a new normal in your relationships during transitional times in life. Uh, this is me. My name is Hailey, and I have a private counseling practice in North Glen that specializes in loss, change, grief, and life transitions. I am accepting new clients and I'm able to schedule in-person appointments at my office using COVID precautions, as well as provide telehealth sessions to anyone in Colorado. Counseling is an encore career for me. And at the age of 50, I finally got tired of people telling me that I had missed my calling and should have been a therapist. So went back to school, got my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling from Regis, and I'm now happily doing what I love for a living. I always knew I wanted to be a counselor, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to specialize in until I started doing hospice work. I started out in patient care, working with people who were dying and ended up spending my internship at the Grief Counseling Center. Being with people who are at the end of life or who are mourning people who have died has really driven home for me what is important in life. Doing this work helps connect me with what makes life meaningful every single day. So what exactly are role changes and why is it important to pay attention to them? Well, we all navigate many role changes in our lives. When we become young adults and our relationship with our parents change as we come into our own, our relationship with our spouse changes over time as we move from being newlyweds to parents to empty nesters. Sometimes there's a divorce and we have to learn to co-parent with ex-spouse. Your spouse might receive a life-limiting medical diagnosis or have an accident that requires you to navigate the role change that occurs in your relationship when you become not only their spouse, but also their caregiver. And eventually, as our parents age and are becoming increasingly depending on their children to manage their care, there are some challenges that arrive us during these times as well. Lately, a lot of people in my practice have been looking for help around how to navigate role changes when their political or religious views have diverged from those of their uh, other important people in their lives. So no matter what change uh, that brought you here today that you might be facing, I think you will find the material in this presentation helpful. Change can be frustrating because it can seem like you don't have a lot of choice in the situation you find yourself in. Your parents are getting older, your kids have grown up, people change, relationships change, you change. And although many changes are inevitable, the changes we face are not always welcome ones. One of my favorite books is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It is written by a psychiatrist who was a Holocaust survivor. And when he was held prisoner in a concentration camp, he made the decision to survive his situation by being a scientific observer of his own experience and of those around him. The quote in the book that has resonated with me ever since I read it is this, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, the ability to choose one's own attitude in any given circumstance, to choose one's own way. This is an important reminder I always tell my clients that if you come to counseling hoping to change someone else, you're gonna be really disappointed. Really, the only thing that you can control, the only agency you have in your own life is choosing how you will respond to the circumstances that you're facing. If there's something in your life that is unsatisfying or a relationship that isn't going well, there are things you can do to choose how you respond and make the situation more manageable for you and hopefully improve your relationships as well. We all fall into the trap of saying, I'll be happy when fill in the blank, or things suck right now, but when fill in the blank happens, life will be good again. I encourage you to shift your thinking on this a little bit to what can I do, not what can someone else do right now in this moment to make things better. Change is rarely one big thing that happens in the future. It's a million tiny little things you do in the moment as you respond to your current situation that creates lasting change. The first step in getting what you want out of a relationship and in role changes is to spend some time figuring out exactly what it is that you want. 
we are really good at communicating both verbally and with our body language, what it is that isn't working and what we don't want. It's much harder to put your finger on what it is that you do want. For example, if you're caring for an aging parent or a spouse who is ill, you know you don't want them to suffer. You don't wanna lose them. You don't want for everything to be different. And taking time to think about the things that you do want or what your ask is will be your guide in these times. I want to try to make the most of the time we have left. I wanna feel close and connected. I want to not only meet your needs, but also have my own needs met as well. Identifying what it is that you want is a vulnerable place to be because it sets you up for disappointment when you don't get it. If your ask is something that you want from yourself, it is 100% within your control to work towards it. If your ask involves others, learning how to communicate that clearly and directly is your only chance of getting it. You may or may not, they may or may not be willing to give it to you, but that is information you can use to decide how you wanna to choose to respond. The goal might not always be to have a close, connected, 100% authentic relationship. This certainly won't be possible when co-parenting with an ex-spouse or if you and some of your family members have completely incompatible political or religious ideologies and are in constant conflict because they will not stop trying to control or change you. When developing your ask in negotiating these role changes, you might need to adjust your expectations for what kind of relationship is possible. Do the current circumstances allow for a close, connected, 100% authentic relationship in which you can be vulnerable and it's safe to be exactly who you are without any filters? Or is this a relationship where applying some filters and boundaries in your relationship might be necessary? Maybe the goal is just to have a pleasant family dinner without fighting or being able to call your mom on Sunday and check in to see how she's doing without having to engage in the same old dysfunctional nonsense that makes you dread talking to her. In extreme cases, maybe the best course of action you can take is to disengage from this person for a while until you can get some distance and perspective and develop a strategy for it and how you would like to try to re-engage with them on your own terms. If this is someone you would like to have an open, honest, close, connected, and genuine relationship with, and you believe that it's possible in the context of this relationship, then it's up to you uh, to model and demonstrate what that looks like for you. Some of these guidelines for how to do that are pretty basic. When you are communicating what you want from or with someone, avoid starting with you, as in you always or you never which immediately puts someone on the defensive and has them formulating rebuttal before you even get the rest of the sentence out of your mouth. Starting with, I'm feeling fill in the blank is a more honest way to start and invites the other person into your inner experience. If you're needing to have a conversation with an aging parent about your concern that living independently might no longer be possible, you can start with something like, I'm feeling really anxious that something could happen to you and nobody would be here to help you. Do you ever worry about that? Stating honestly how you feel and inviting them to respond. Or if you're caring for a spouse and it feels like your whole relationship is now centered around doctor's appointments and medication management, you might say, I really miss just being your wife sometimes. This is really stressful. What would you think about just snuggling on the couch tonight and talking about anything but cancer? Or if your kids have grown up and moved away and they don't call you enough, pick up the phone and call them. You could open with something like, I was really missing you today and I wanted to hear your voice. Tell me what you did today, even if it seems routine. Just talk to me about your day. Then listen, really listen, instead of just waiting to talk. Ask them questions about what they just said. Be curious about what all of this is like for them. Instead of telling someone what you think first, ask them what they think and then invite collaboration if this is something where a decision has to be made. If you're introducing a new topic, like asking your parent if they wanna come live with you or would like to consider moving into a senior community, then ask them about what things they had considered first. Give up your need to convince them that the solution that you have in your mind is the best or only one. And be open to the possibility that their ideas might be better or that together you can come up with something that neither one of you had considered. 
<laughs> Maybe you remember this movie, um, Meet the Fockers. I love that movie. Um, the most important thing to remember when navigating a role change is keeping yourself fully inside the other person's circle of trust. Or as one of my favorite psychologists, William Glasser would say, in their quality world. When you find yourself nagging or controlling or always being critical or telling people what they should do, you will quickly find yourself outside of the circle of trust or quality world. And once outside, it can be really hard to get back in. Be more intentional in your communication. Before you say something, ask yourself, is this something that will help or hurt the relationship? And is there a better way to communicate this ask? Is this something that the person needs to hear or just something that you need to get off your chest? Maybe it would be better for the relationship if I said this to my counselor or my friend instead of to this person. Would I be okay with someone saying this to me if the roles were reversed? Am I trying to solve a problem here in a spirit of collaboration? Or am I trying to assert my will and need to control the situation? Is this battle worth fighting? or can I let it go? If you are a caregiver for someone and you're always really upbeat and telling them, be strong, you've got this, you're a fighter, that might seem like a good message, but then it might make them feel like they can't tell you when they feel weak or scared or frightened or pissed off. And if you're insisting that your mom leave her house and are nagging her about it and um, to move in with you or into an assisted living facility, she might not be willing to tell you if she had a bad fall or forgot to turn off the stove or set a dish towel on fire. If you constantly tell your college age kid how proud you are of them and how great they're doing and how you're so happy that they're so doing so, so well, then they might be reluctant to tell you when they're failing a class or that they're really homesick and lonely. So using those communication skills we talked about, asking open-ended questions, giving up your need for control, using I statements, being curious and open to whatever it is they have to say, and not going into the conversation to convince, but to collaborate. We'll make sure that you stay in this circle of trust and that the person that you're in relationship will feel like they can tell you anything, even if it's something that's hard to hear. <laughs> Sometimes the goal isn't to be in the circle of trust. Maybe you have just come out as LGBTQ and your dad has made it clear that he will never accept who you are, insists that it's a phase and refers to your same sex partner as your little friend. Or perhaps you grew up in a really strict fundamentally religious household, but you no longer share your parents' religious beliefs and they never stop proselytizing and trying to bring you back into the fold. Perhaps your parents hold political beliefs that go against everything you stand for or your ex-husband cheated on you and now you have to drop off your kids at his new girlfriend's house. There are lots of role changes where being close, connected, honest, genuine, and 100% your authentic self is not the goal. And it's not safe in the context of this relationship. If this is the case for you, then there are some strategies that we can use to have a more functional, less confrontational, and more peaceful coexistence in order not to cut someone out completely and keep the lines of communication open if that's what you want and that's what your goal is for this relationship. Some of the strategies are to set and communicate clear boundaries with that person. Remember, you have to be very clear first on what it is that you want and then communicate that directly. This might sound like, mom, I appreciate very much that your religion is important to you, but I'm not feeling like it's helping our relationship right now to talk about it and I need a break. Tell me about what sewing projects you're working on, or maybe we can both read a fun mystery and have a little two-person book club. Or maybe, Dad, I don't think we're ever gonna see eye to eye on politics, so how about we try not to push each other's buttons so much and talk about the Broncos instead? Focus on things you can talk about. Reminisce about good times you've had. Find things that you do have in common. And most of all, and this is the important part, Find acceptance for the fact that a close and connected relationship might not be possible with this person right now and maybe ever. And for the limitations that you have to put in place in regard to this relationship. This might not be the relationship you wanted, but perhaps it can still be good in other ways and fill a need you have to maintain open lines of communication with them. 
It's important to set and communicate clear boundaries surrounding what you are and what you are not willing to discuss with them or what behavior you will and won't accept. Communicate these things gently, kindly, and sincerely, not accusing or blaming, but just stating what your ask is of them. You can rehearse strategies with your counselor or a trusted friend so you can redirect the conversation away from hot topics or to extricate yourself from a situation when boundaries are crossed without being baited into a confrontation or argument. Remember that you can't control them, but you can always, always choose how you wish to respond. They can't get a reaction of you if you aren't willing to give it to them. And if they consistently push up against these boundaries, give yourself permission to disengage from them for a while or even permanently if you have to. Just because someone is family does not give them a right to be abusive to you. I love elephants um, because they really function as a supportive community. They help take care of the young, the sick, the dying. They share resources and they turn to each other when they need help. In Megan Devine's book, it's okay that you're not okay. She received a card from her friend when her daughter was killed that said, gather your elephants, love, we're here, which gave me the chills. We would all be well served by gathering our elephants. I interviewed a woman once who was in an arranged marriage and I asked her if she wasn't worried about being able to love the man that her parents had selected for her. She said, if he's a good man, what's not to love? She went on to say that the Western idea of marriage seemed odd to her because Western women expected their husbands to be a co-parent, a lover, a best friend, a life partner, a confidant, and serve as their entire support system. She laughed and said that that was a lot to expect from one person. She said, my husband is many of those things, but I also have my mother, my sister, my friends, my coworkers, my therapist, and many other people who can take care of some of the burden and take it off of my poor husband so that I can enjoy the things that he does bring to our marriage. So gather your elephants. If your relationships are unsatisfying, it could be that you're demanding too much from them. It's often said that disappointment is measured by the distance between expectation and reality. When it comes to relationships with other people, sometimes the needed change is in our expectations rather than trying to bend reality to fit those expectations. So this is the end of our formal presentation part of today's webinar. I thank you all for coming again and spending part of your Sunday afternoon with me. If you or someone you know would like to do some individual counseling, my private practice is accepting new clients. I have weekend and evening appointments available, and I offer a sliding scale fee structure to make counseling affordable to anyone who needs it. I'm now going to turn off the recording so that we can begin the Q&A session. Um, feel free to enable video, audio, and chat. Does anyone have any comments or questions for me today? <laughs>